So the latest installment in the Scream franchise, Scream 6, just hit theaters, and to celebrate, I'm going to rank it with all the rest of the Scream movies. You know you're like the 10th guy to try this, right? What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Cobwebs channel, where we're normally dusting off old movies. My name is Daniel, but we're going a little bit more modern today to talk about the Scream movies, because I just saw Scream 6. I'm a little bit fired up. Let's talk about this whole series. So at number six, my least favorite of the franchise is Scream. 2022. Now, for one thing, this has the worst title in the franchise. I'm not a big fan of naming legacy sequels the same title as the original, but also this is the one that I think has the least interesting meta commentary. Now, meta commentary is something that really defines the Scream franchise. It's actually a reason that I took a little bit longer than most people to get on board with this franchise, because I'm not always the biggest fan of meta commentary, and this, I think, is the worst example of it. For one thing, it's trying to talk about elevated horror, this trend that movies like The Babadook get out and the witch typically fit in, which feels pretty pointless because this movie doesn't fit in that subgenre at all. So that really goes nowhere. The movie even goes so far as to directly insult a specific real life director who has nothing to do with the franchise, the Knives Out guy, which I find pretty tasteless. And again, irrelevant to the horror genre. I suspect foul play. The movie is populated with new characters. I think they're mildly successful, but I feel like the movie that preceded this actually did it better. Scream 2022 definitely has some good things going for it. I think David Arquette's fantastic. It might be one of his best performances in the series. But for me, this is just the most derivative. And it's it's a movie that even Niv Campbell at the end says, oh, you're the most unoriginal ghost face. And that's kind of how the mo whole movie feels. At number five is the movie that most people put at the bottom, and that is Scream 3. Now, one reason I put this above of Scream 2022 is I feel like there is just an inherent charm to this cast of characters in their prime. Those original three Scream movies really coast a lot on the charm of its cast when they were at their best, and Scream 3 probably coast the most. This is the most overtly comedic of all of the Scream movies. It's fairly goofy, but I feel like it's kind of successful in its goofy comedy, and it kind of sets it apart from the rest of the movies. I also enjoy the addition of Patrick Dempsey, and I like that Scream 2022 actually confirmed that he stuck around in Sydney's life. The end reveal is up with Scream 2022 as far as the worst end reveals in the franchise. It sets up some new lore that subsequent additions throughout because it was clearly a bad idea and they just kind of ignored it altogether. But I do think Scream 3 is a charming, fun experience. Plus, Gail's bangs. Is that a reason that the movie is this low or this high? you decide. At number four is well-titled, it's Scream 4. Now, I actually think Scream 4 is a pretty big jump up from these last two movies. I really enjoy Scream 4 a lot. I think a lot of what Scream 2022 goes for, Scream 4 actually does better as far as like remake commentary that I end up really enjoying. I like the new cast of characters, but I still like that Sydney is still clearly the main character of this movie. That's the last movie in which she would retain that lead status. And Kirby is a fantastic addition. I'm very pro Kirby and I love the end reveal. I think, again, a lot of these movies struggle with a disappointing uh, solution to the mystery. This is not one of them. I think the actor, I'm not going to say who it is, but the actor really plays it up big time. And it's just an interesting direction to take it that reframes the whole movie, I think, in a pretty interesting way. Plus, you've got a sequence at a stab marathon and there's like a barn and a bunch of hay. It's great, like fall autumn atmosphere that I very much enjoy. At number three is the latest film in the franchise, and that is Scream 6 that just hit theaters this weekend. And this movie just really, really worked for me. I had so much fun with it. I think it's a giant step up from Scream 2022, because while that last Scream movie introduced these new characters, I felt like they were okay. They were serviceable enough characters. I wasn't super on board with them. I actually found Jack Quaid the most charming of them, which is a little bit of a problem. If you've seen that movie, then you know. Uh, hi. Gen Z, how are you? Um... But in this movie, that's not the case at all. I think Sam Carpenter, played by Melissa Barreras, has now established herself as a great and very interesting lead for this franchise. The appeal of the Scream franchise has never really been Ghostface. It's been Nev Campbell as Sydney. She's a great lead character to follow. And if this series is going to succeed going forward, you've got to get somebody that can actually replace that. And I think this character really does. Her lineage, as far as being related to a past serial killer from this franchise, makes her this really interesting person who is a person who 
is ultimately good, knows right from wrong, but still has these serial killer tendencies that she's working through. There's a great moment towards the end of the last movie that sets that up, and it's one of my favorite moments in the movie. And then this movie carries that on so well. So I'm a huge fan of her, but I also think the other characters that return from that last movie are now way more charming, interesting, and fun to follow throughout the movie. But then this is a movie that's starting to move away from movie commentary, not completely, but much more than the last movie, which I think is the right way to go. The original screen was so fresh with its meta commentary. And I think each subsequent movie is kind of getting less fresh and less interesting with that. This movie has the least to do with that. And I really appreciated that. It's a vicious, brutal ghost face. This is also the first movie in the franchise to innovate the look of Ghostface at all. And even just aging the mask, I think was a really cool way to go. It's a nice touch. I really like the look of Ghostface in this. And of course, whether this is actually the third best Scream movie is highly debatable. I've seen Scream rankings online the last few days all over the map. But I think it's very clear that this is the third best cold open, possibly even the second best. I think the cold open is so interesting, so scary and tense, and ends up going in a wildly unexpected direction that I was a huge fan of. I think this is clearly one of the scariest and most intense Scream movies with three of the best sequences in the whole franchise. That's the ladder sequence, the convenience store sequence, and the subway sequence are all great, frightening, amazing horror set pieces. I just think this is a really good movie. And if you haven't seen it yet, because it did just come out, I highly recommend it. At number two, another well-titled entry, and that is Scream 2. Now, I said about Scream 3 that there's just a charm to these first three Scream movies that can't be replicated just from watching this cast in their prime. And Scream 2 really goes off of that so well. The cast is excellent in this movie. This movie is just as well made as the first one. And it's probably the only movie I could say that about. It's not quite as fresh, not quite as interesting, maybe not quite as scary as that first one. You have a point. Okay, let's move on. But it's so brilliantly directed. It's got great horror sequences. I love how the relationship builds between Gale and Dewey in this movie. Love Courtney Cox and David Arquette in this film so much. It's just such a well-made horror sequel in pretty much every way. It's got all of the slickness and the sheen that big budget 90s movies, particularly late 90s movies, had so well. Not one of the best final reveals. I think the final reveal is good enough, but everything leading up to that is just so clearly great. But at number one, there's just no question for me, that is Scream from 1996. The one that started it all. This is a movie that has become so iconic. It has entered into the pantheon of Horror Hall of Fame, particularly when you look at that opening sequence of Drew Barrymore. Never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Every Scream movie after this is chasing that sequence, trying to be half that good. It's a sequence that has reached like shower scene in Psycho levels, opening of Halloween levels. Like it's just at that kind of level of iconography and greatness. Sydney is an amazing lead character for this movie, populated by a bunch of other great actors playing great characters. And the meta commentary is at its best in this first movie. It might seem a little bit cliche now, just pointing out the, if you have sex, you die. Don't say I'll be right back. It's stuff that we've heard a zillion times now, but that's because this movie really didn't establish the tropes, but established how we talk about those tropes and establish just what cliches they are. This is the movie that really points that out. And if it seems cliche now, it's because this movie has just that much cultural impact. It's the scariest in the series, the most intense, and it has by far the best final reveal. So that's it, folks, my ranking of the Scream franchise. Let me know down in the comments below what your ranking is. I would love to know, or at least what you thought of Scream 6. Thank you all so much. I've got more videos about much older movies coming up very soon. So give a subscribe if you're into that, a like if you enjoyed, and thanks very much.